Okay, so uh, continuing on with our uh, discussion of input and output, uh, today we're going to look at using files for input and output. And so this deals with an area known as file IO. So we'll start out with uh, motivating this a bit. And when we do the actual class, we'll do some demos uh, with C line. Uh, we'll talk about how you can deal with input failure if you can't find the uh, correct file and how you can uh, work with uh, files. Uh, input failure also deals with what happens if somebody gives the incorrect input and how you can deal with that, which is, you know, kind of a topic for a bit later, but uh, uh, the focus will be on working with files. So things can go wrong uh, during execution. If the input data doesn't match uh, the corresponding variables, uh, for example, you're looking for an integer and somebody inputs a, a double, program can uh, run into uh, trouble. For another example is reading a letter into an int or a double variable. That will result in input failure and uh, things uh, won't go so well. If the error occurs when reading data from the input stream, uh, then it enters the fail state. And once it's in the fail state, all further I.O. statements uh, using the stream are ignored or even worse, it kind of goes into an infinite loop and you have to do a control C. Uh, the program could also continue to execute with whatever values are stored in those variables and get incorrect uh, results. In any case, it's not good. Uh, one uh, solution to that is the uh, clear function to uh, clear the input stream to a working state if you get uh, incorrect uh, input. Now, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, so, so far with the input that we've done, uh, we've got an input from the keyboard and we've done output to the screen. And this is great. It helps us uh, run very basic programs, uh, take input from the user and uh, give appropriate output. Uh, the problem is, is it bypasses mass storage. Uh, we have, you know, in addition to the input uh, keyboard and monitor, we have a file system associated with our computer and we can actually take advantage of that. Uh, one of the problems with uh, input from the keyboard and output to the screen is the data is not persistent. You have to retype it every run. You can imagine that would be problematic for like a large uh, corporation, like say General Motors doing uh, inventory, um, you know, or nightly uh, uh, picking reports. Um, you know, those would be far too large to uh, type in each uh, time. So, you know, it'd be great if we could store them into a file. Because again, we can't deal with that large amount of data uh, typing it in or reading it off the uh, screen. So enter input files as a solution. We can use files for data. In this class, we're just going to be using sequential uh, text files. Uh, it means we'll go read from the beginning to the end, and we're just going to keep them as simple ASCII uh, text files. Uh, later on, you'll learn about different types of files in uh, computer science classes, uh, databases in the uh, 420 sequence at UH Hilo, uh, image processing, uh, different ways to manipulate different types of files. For right now, we're going to just focus on uh, sequential text-based files. Do we need a library? Yeah, we're going to need a library. And the library we need is fstream. Uh, for input files, we'll use a class called ifstream. For example, ifstream infile, which will declare um, a input file stream called infile, which will serve as our input file. And later on, we'll have ofstream and need to give a file name um, name for that object, uh, usually outfile. Uh, but in order to do this, we actually need to have the file. And we can include it in our CLIN project. Uh, and so in the Project Explorer, what you do is you right-click the uh, name of the project. This one's uh, Untitled 9. Uh, you'll get New, and from New, you'll click File. Uh, you'll give it a name, uh, for example, input.txt, and then it will show up in that uh, Project Explorer uh, pane over on the uh, left, and you can actually uh, directly edit it. I've already got input.txt here, so you can just double-click that and uh, edit it. After declaring the uh, file, we need to open it. It's best to use the full path of the file if you have it. Um, if you don't, then you know uh, a lot of times it'll default to the uh, path where you store the uh, rest of the things. But I like to give the uh, full path for these. Um, so this one uh, would be stored under C users key C line projects untitled nine input dot text. Uh, if you just do input dot text, you have to make sure that the uh, path is set correctly. Um, and you know some system things so that it knows where to uh, look for that. 
Uh, you can allow the user to specify a file using a string. Uh, if you want to um, you know, let them specify it, then you could declare a string called file name and say what it's the name of the input file, read in that file name. And then when you open it, you need to convert it to a C string, which is that dot C underscore str uh, command there. Uh, you can also check to see if things worked uh, correctly using the uh, fail function. So in this case, if mfile.fail, then you could say file failed uh, to open and return one. Uh, reading from the file, you can simply use the extraction operators um, to get information out of the file. There's also the possibility of uh, using git to read them uh, one character at a time. But for example, here, if I have my name as a string, I can do mfile my name. And then after you're done, you want to close the file using the dot close uh, command. So if we had named our um, input file stream mfile, we would do mfile.close. And that breaks the association between the stream object and the file and actually closes it properly. It prevents uh, corruption and locking of the file if uh, something happens that ends your uh, program abnormally. So it's a good thing to include in uh, practice. Um, so uh, the input file process, you need to do pound include uh, fstream uh, C standard library if you want to use the uh, exit function. Uh, ifstream instream, uh, that declares a, a new file called, uh, a new object called instream that's a part of the input file stream. Then we open it, uh, given the appropriate uh, file name. And again, I like to use that uh, full path. Um, if there's a fail, give a report and usually an exit with some condition other than zero. Um, and then um, in stream uh, dot close after you're done reading everything in. Uh, output files, very similar process. You need the uh, pound include F stream uh, library to do that. Uh, and then the class that we're using is OF stream. And here we have OF stream. Uh, is the type and out file is the uh, name of the object and out file is going to be the output file. Uh, you don't need to add the file to the solution since the program will automatically uh, create it. Uh, while you don't need to create it, you do need to open it. So you would do out file dot open and give it the name. And again, if you wanted to specify from the user, you can read that in as a string and convert it to a C string. Uh, to write to it, use the insertion operators, just like you would with a C out, except you're substituting out file here. After you're done, you need to close the file, and then you finish up the program. <clears throat> One thing to note is format is important, uh, particularly for the input file. You need to kind of know what you're reading. So, you know, if you expect it, uh, John followed by 56, that's going to be different than John, name John, age 56, um, you know, or uh, John um, followed by a carriage return line feed 56. So you kind of need to know the format of the input file to deal with these. So make sure you have your input file specified uh, correctly. And that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching.